I have uh, two sons that are creating YouTube um, pages, no, uh, logs, video logs. And um, they're both talking about, you know, socialism and different things. And I've been pondering for, I don't know, several months now what it, what it means. And um, having been raised in a capitalist country for decades and decades and de decades, 60, going on 65 years, 64 point something. And um, in considering these things, I'm saying to myself, well, you know, all of the the stereotypes of communism and socialism and in listening to my my sons and uh, realizing that most of the things that that they're reading has been posted by intellectuals and you know pseudo uh, experts on the subject mostly people who have uh, you know read books on it Marxism and so forth it's just not uh, not reality. So in thinking to myself, you know, what is socialism? What is capitalism? What is communism? I realized that um, much of the debate has been caused by propaganda on both sides. And six letters that should be aborted from the English language, the uh, ism of uh, capitalist and ism. Those, those two things need to be stricken. And uh, this is the reason why. If you think about social, what it means, and commune, what it means, by themselves, they are pleasant, they're positive, they're exceptionally good. They're completely within the realm of, you know, what people profess as Christians, for sure. So the Christians should have nothing bad to say about either. Um, and the word comrade, you know, you go, oh my God, comrade. There you go, another communist word. Actually, there's a couple of letters that you should add when you hear comrade, and that is the letters R and Y. Camaraderie. It's not a bad thing. Being a comrade is positive because it means fellowship. It means doing positive things with each other. You know, like, you know, comrades would get together and support a dam that's going to be overflowing or helping to reinforce a dike when floodwaters come up or planting a communal garden so that uh, socially we can, you know, enjoy the benefits together. The word social is positive. You think about uh, a person who wants to socialize, a person who wants to fellowship, a person who is looking for the common good, the welfare of others. And I don't mean welfare as in handing out, you know, free everything, just equality and making sure that, you know, your neighbor has plenty to eat and the roof doesn't leak and they've got wood for the winter, et cetera, et cetera. And the same thing for the word commune. You think, oh, hippies and all this other crap. But the reality of it is uh, we are, as human beings, communal people. We live in a residence, usually with other people that's commuting. And we build our homes in neighborhoods that's commuting. We build our neighborhoods in communities that are either hamlets or villages or towns or cities or even metropolises. And you think, okay, one of the coldest cities by reputation is New York, 
where people don't really give a crap about each other. But that's not true. If they didn't give a crap about each other, they would feel no remorse. They would feel no pain. They wouldn't hurt when their neighbors are hurting. They wouldn't be injured when they hear about, you know, the kid down the block being shot or stabbed or someone being raped or robbed or a store being robbed or a place burning to the ground. They would have no such feelings. And that's not true because they're part of the community, the part of the neighborhood. So the next time somebody says communism or socialism or socialist or communist, take those last three letters off and shut the fuck up for a minute or two and think about social is a positive thing. Communing is a positive thing. It was people like your, your Lenin, your Mao, your uh, Pol Pot, your uh, Kim Jong-il, and your Adolf from Germany. Those were, you know, a, he was a socialist and they were communists. And by that, I mean, they hijacked the positive attributes, turned them into a political elevator to rise to the top. They used it. They hijacked it. They corrupted it. They used it to become tyrants and maintain power and they destroyed the concepts behind social and commune and working for the common good. They destroyed it. And now people who are capitalists, you know, people who are so goddamn greedy that a million dollars in the bank isn't enough, they need a billion or 130 billion or a trillion, it's not enough. The ists, okay, and the isms destroy the true meaning of those words. They're used as vehicles to funnel you and I and all of the common folk into segregated prison cells. We are channeled, we're labeled, we're stamped and we're shuffled into these holding cells, these uh, borders, these boundaries, these confinements, and we're trained from birth. In our schools, everywhere, we're told daily by the media that, you know, you're white, so you're bad. You're black, so you need to be afraid of the white. The whites need to be afraid of the blacks all in the name of keeping the 1% or the tyrants at the top in power, they control us through fear. They create fear within us by showing us daily, by, by the propaganda put out through the media. All of these false notions that, oh my gosh, the, the black mob is going to rape, rob, and steal from all the white people, and the white people are privileged, and that's why the black people are doing it. All of these things are used to segregate us, to keep us after each other, to create bigotry, to create fear, to create hatred. Those are isms and ists that need to be aborted from our language. Those play into the ignorance and the stigmas that keep the rich rich and in power and the rest of us voting for them to stay in power. See how that works, folks? Not good. Those, those isms and ists and words like that need to disappear.